All right, I'll tell you what. So, show you how to do this cartoon style for this one. Haiki. Um, give you some tips for your profile picture here to help you out um, drawing in the style. So, um, yeah, let's get started on that. So, one thing that you definitely got right on that was the circle head. I really like what you did there. This is kind of like a circleish squished. So I'm gonna just pull this up sketch that I've done already, kind of for the proportions. I kind of show you how I got um, face shape of the duck right here. So I'm gonna lower the opacity on this layer and change my color so I can better show you. So the duck kind of has an on ongulated like oval thing. So if you look, the top is just a regular circle, which you definitely got right. So if you just um, kind of draw a circle right here, and it doesn't have to be a perfect one. Like, mines are never perfect. You can just draw a circle until you get the desired shape. Um, so if you want your spacing this direction, what I'd like to do to help me a lot of times is draw uh, guidelines, because these guidelines are really helpful for when you're trying to... Um, Get your proportions a little bit more accurate at least for me kind of like styles like this so um in the middle of your circle kind of like right here you want to draw a line like down now what i like to do when you want to give a drawing more depth um this is a cartoon you can squish a lot more i do a lot of anime drawings so what i like to do is kind of like keep the jaw line like that kind of in a v-shape but since the style has like a, a cartoon C curve, um, what I think would be a good idea is, well, I just do this for base drawing. So instead of drawing the guideline straight down, can I draw it at a curve like this? Because a curved line is going to give you a better idea of how the face is going to flow. Because if you look like this, it's going down and then across. So what you can do from there is, let me just grab another color. Um, I could take this headpiece right here and bring it down and kind of swoop across because it makes kind of like a C shape. So from that, I know I can make kind of like this chin and then just add a little line. Because what you can do is use this as a reference for your hair, I think is what you were trying to do. This spot right here, there's just enough space that you can kind of draw like a C to make ears. That's what I like to do. Keep it kind of simple sometimes because it makes it way easier to draw these type of things. And then for your neck, if you want that cartoony effect, um, what you can do, and what I like to do personally, is it kind of made like a V shape. So instead of making this ungulated like straight shape, this is the type of shape you would make like if their face was facing forward, but since it looks like it's kind of facing to the side, what I like to do is kind of come down from the ear about kind of around a good little space and just kind of make a miniature V going up. Or what you could do is if you feel more comfortable, you can draw it like a square in your guidelines going into the head. By doing this, it helps you place your neck a little bit easier than it would be to try to randomly um, place it. Once you have that guidelines down, um, you can lower your opacity of your layer. And this is where the eyes can come in. So where I put mine is a little bit different. But what you can do that helps me out is now that I have the basic shape, I know I want my eyes kind of like around here. And I love what you did, because you can make it very simple. With things like this, it's just an oval. But if you want to enhance the design a little bit, what you could do is kind of come up and make these like upside down U's. You don't really have to finish those if you don't want to, but you always can. So if you want to, could just come across, cut them off to make like beady eyes, or 
like I did in this sketch. I just kind of made like quick ovals in the original version, which is essentially the same sketch, I guess. <laughs> For the hair, um, I can also show you how to do this. I really like how you did your hair, but you don't have to draw every single unit like that unless you want a lot of detail. Um, The fun thing with cartoons is um, you can really stretch proportions or make more simplicity depending on what you're drawing if that's what you want to do. So I'm going to just make a new layer and kind of keep this blue because I like blue. It's kind of aesthetically pleasing. For the hairstyle you're doing, you can kind of take the reference of this duck and um, kind of go with your tufts here. So what I like to do is right where the curve is of the head. I can go ahead and go out just a little um, triangle, kind of, like what you did. And I know you kind of want the hair here, so what you can do is draw a line, or better yet, um, draw a circle kind of right here, because it looks like that's where your hair wants to meet. And by drawing a circle here, you now have the point of origin where your hair is going to meet. Trust me, you can erase this later. Just lower the opacity of that layer if you're working with that, or you can erase it with a sketch. The reason I say put this circle here is it helps me visualize where my hair is starting and ending from. Because human hair always has an origin point. Like, kind of the stuck is kind of near the corner of the glasses, because all the hair dollops, if you were to connect the lines, go right back this point of origin. So um, it's kind of something I like to do. It looks like your hair is kind of going down by the ear, so you can always start down here, and since it's going up, just make like a little um, curve, nothing too fancy, just little triangles to move up the hairline. You can have it going straight, with like a little curve going up here. And then your hair can start from like right there and just keep moving up towards kind of that point of origin. So you can keep adding more and more tufts because they're going to keep falling back onto what you had placed originally. Because you can go add like crazy details like this, or you can kind of keep it simplistic depending on what you'd rather do, because this kind of looks more like a girl. I don't know. <laughs> um, when I'm sketching clothes, I like what you did. Really, it's pretty simple. Um, I think what I can recommend is once you've got this next curve, everything kind of follows. So what I like to do is add like a little bit more curve and a little C, and then I follow my neckline down. And then you want to go back and kind of add a line here. And when you put it over, it kind of looks like it's, uh, Fold it in on itself, kind of like a outfit would, just a little bit. But that's kind of touches I like to add. And you can put your tie, just do like a little triangle, and then you could just move down with it because your tux is going to take over. And add a little line for the tux, and then because this is perspective, kind of. You could just add a line with a curve and a little corner and there's the rest of your shirt. From there, kind of like go in the middle here and draw a line straight down. Curve it up just a little bit. You don't even need to add the other arm like piece if you didn't want to. This is just regular tuxedo. 
You can easily get away with that. I realized I was drawing this backwards. <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, you can, can come, come from, from here. here. Kind of have, have a little, little shoulder, shoulder line, line going. going. You don't, you don't even, even need to make your other shoulder, shoulder too big because of how it's kind of sitting. If, if you really want to, you can easily add a little bit more detail by just going over and adding like a couple lines here and there to the sketch to bring out that outfit just a little bit. And then you just lower the opacity. <laughs> um, another thing, thing your liner is really, really good. I don't know what program you use specifically, but for me, I use a lot of um, Krita. So one thing I'd like to do is kind of um, for my liner go towards like a black color for cartoons, since you're using kind of like uh, that type of color scheme. I'll go ahead and use uh, basic brush. For mine, or um, sometimes when I'm feeling really froggy with line art, this depends on the program you have. You may not have it, but if you go over to, um, I think it's paint. Yeah, uh, no, not this one. Uh, yes, basic brush. Because when you press down, it changes the um, opacity on the line, which is what I really like. So you can have like lighter or darker lines. But, but for cartoons, cartoons they, they typically have, have like thick, thick lines, so we, so we can, can get away, away with like doing, doing that. that. So, so you, you just go to a black color, and then you can just go over your sketch. I find, I find quick strokes, strokes kind of help out. Um, I was drawing on the same layer. See, this, this is why you want to make sure you make a new layer. Um, oh jeez. Use Louise, Louise. Um, okay. okay. So, so that's, that's just going to permanently be there until I delete later. later. But well, as, as I was saying, saying um, confidence strokes help. help. So, so if you mess up, up the first time, time don't worry about it. it. It's an easy fix. fix. But, but by um, being, being confident, confident, you can, can get, get these clean lines. lines. And don't, and don't worry if you, you have, have to go over them more once or twice because it does kind of help you just kind of draw a line now. And, and you can always delete the part where they intersect if you don't want them intersecting there. I like, I like to draw, to draw the eyes um, before I draw, draw the hair on top, top again, again. Just, just for the simple fact that, that I'm going to tell you this right now, when, when hair overlaps, it's just easier to be able to erase then remake, I guess. Yes. Makes, Makes sense. sense. For me, anyway. See, See I, I even get, get um, line work wrong all the time. time. Like, like, every single time. time. I, don't I don't know. know. I, don't I don't know, know why on earth I do, but I do. I do. If you, you want to make, make it kind of like, like fancy, how I like to do it, I kind of like to add like, like lines or whatever underneath the... Um, Eyes for like, like little expressions, expressions. So, so like tappy, like, like a little arch or something, because, because that's just kind of how I um, I make things. I kind of oversimplify a little bit because I just, just really get into artsy fancy stuff. stuff. But uh, that's, that's up, up to you. you. There we go. Little lines because it's, it's cute, cute. That's, that's why. why. And you, you can, can add your tufts of hair back, back. Because, because they have the point, point origin, they're, they're gonna, gonna go, go right back, back up to the top to so just, just meet up, up over, over there. there. And, and it, it does, does give you some freedom to like, like change it up a little bit because, because of how that looks. You can, can kind of take a little bit more freedom or liberty to really just. Experiment with it, like, like with the hair, hair a little bit more back, back here. It's 
sometimes, sometimes it's about like, like kind of fleshing out your sketch, sketch helps you. Like, like you, you don't, don't always have to go with the first draft. Um, something I like doing, just kind of going with it. Because then, then you can, can um, you can make a lot more options, options with it. it. Slowly reminding me of Todoroki. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. But, uh, yeah, yeah so, so you can, can kind of play around with, with your tufts, tufts of hair, however you want them to, like, really go. Add another ear here, maybe. It's kind of turning out cute. <laughs> Sometimes, Sometimes you could just, just do a simple, simple shape. shape. You, you don't, don't even have to sit there and really go nuts. Some little line. That down. down. And just give them a little smirk. A little line underneath, because I like to do a little line thing. A couple more types of hair. Then you can delete your under sketch, or kind of like hide it, and see how you like the top, and how it kind of changed a little bit. For coloring, I've got a pretty good hack so you don't like get it over your line work or whatever. Um, I like to kind of go underneath my sketch layer after I clean it up just a little bit and paint directly underneath it because it's not going to do anything. But first, the gray background is a great idea. Um, I like using gray backgrounds when coloring anyway. Like, I don't know, just reference. So, so you got, got that, that part down, because it kind of helps with colors, uh, depending on like what you like to do, I suppose. Um, I like using... Oh, what color one is this one? Ah, uh, yes. And experimenting with an English lately that I haven't been using that often, but uh, basic flow opacity is one I've been playing around with as of late, and I actually really like Kind of the like colors, colors that it gives, or just regular flow opacity. So you can, can take the skin color you did, and then apply it to your character. And I like getting my base colors down first, before I do any like type of cell shading or anything. Because that kind of helps. Don't worry about it, like covering up sketches or anything, because look, like, my colors of the line work kind of makes it blend in just a little bit, depending on the uh, opacity of things, I suppose. I'm also realizing that I did the outfit kind of based off of Attack on Titan just a little bit. Um, I do have a little references to the scout regimen in here, so nerd. You can color on the tie, put that in there, and we've got white collar. I really like this tux design. This looks very clean. Like the color palette is very, very nice. Put in the brown eyes. Hold in nicely over there. And we got black hair. So what we'll do is move it slightly down to like a, um, not at quite white light back. But like, like a greenish black. black. And the, the reason, reason for that, that is when you're like, like shading. I, I took a long time to learn this, this but um, turns out when you shade hair or anything like, like black, if you use complete black and the plan is not just to have it just like, like black, um, you're, you're gonna have a really hard time shading it to a specific like uh, color. And personally found that out a while ago. It also helps for me. I like to name like a uh, base color layer or something stupid like that. 
so, so I, I know, know what the layer is because uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's helpful. helpful. We can, we can go, go into, into a little bit of shading here. here. They, they kind of have like, like just pure, pure color, color in some, some areas. areas. So, so that's, that's kind of what I'm gonna do here is like recolor re in some of the messy spots that the, the other colors, colors ran into. Go ahead and get in the crevices and some spots, like, like fix up the eyes and where the hair was not supposed to have color. color. It, it takes, takes a few extra minutes, minutes because of how messy it gets, but it does make it a lot quicker, quicker than going in and coloring every individual bit in piece by piece, by piece because Laziness. <laughs> yeah. Laziness. It's, it's virtue. <laughs> anyway. anyway. Go ahead. Like, like get this ear back, back out. Cartoons, I like doing, doing big ears because I think they kind of look cute, but it's really up to you, whichever one you, you kind of want to do, because it's, it's like, like um, style, style preference. preference. I like, I like to use the, the gray, gray for shading, but um, what I like to do is kind of grab like a airbrush and then kind of go over to like a pastel kind of pink or something. Lower your brush size and then kind of... You can use the gray kind of go into like a lighter kind of gray pink shred tone. And, and the, the reason, reason I recommend, recommend that, that is because it's, it's going to um, not look as off with the pale white skin. skin. You, you can, can kind of go around like areas of the ear and paint around it. Like I kind of, I don't know, I'm debating adding an accent on the nose, but I don't know. And well, then if you, you wanted to add a little bit more depth, depth you can go into like a kind of pastel pink and go on top of those grays kind of lightly, because, because that's going to give the illusion of, like, um, a skin tone. tone. And, and if, if you, you want to blush, you can lighten it a little bit and kind of go on the cheeks over the, the, where the, the nose would be just a little bit. bit. And, and if, if you don't, don't want it too noticeable, I like, like to go over to my um, blending, blending tool or smudging tool. tool. Lower the size and then kind of go up and down, left and right, right motion, and it spreads it kind of evenly throughout the um, face. So you have the illusion of like a cartoonish skin color, but it's not extremely um, in depth. And then there's parts that are kind of not showing. You can go over with it with like a skin color. And, and it, it should, should blend in pretty well. well. It'll, It'll just, just look like kind of highlights. It covers up any inaccuracies that you may have had. So you can go like under the eye. Uh, and then like we can draw the eyes. What they did for their eyes is pretty simple. They just kind of did like a darker, lighter shade. So um, I can show you how to do that as well. Just kind of move your brush down to like a darker brown, and, and go, go on the, the top, kind of halfway, and cut, cut it like that. Once, once you do that, that just move, move up, down, kind of split. split. Although, um, they kind of have more of like an oval shape, shape so, so if you want to do that, that, then you can easily cut out that by just moving up. up in the half, and it kind of gives you that. So you can, there we go. Make your curve. And then if you grab your um, blender tool, lower the size, what I like to do is kind of just blur it out. So it looks like it, um, flows in seamlessly to my head. I want to go back on my lower layer and kind of fix the skin color here because it, I still have uh, hair color in my skin color and that's driving me a little bit 
that's keeping going. Fix that. Go to nuts, but, but if you, you want to add a bit, bit more shading like you did on your hair, hair. Um, make, make a new layer above the layer you just did your eyes. That helps me out. out. <coughs> I like, like to kind of just, just color in, in a inaccuracy, like, like color gaps that I might, might still have in my hair now. Like, like kind of like, like um. Just, just do it in a way that it's staying in the lines, kind of cleaning up the hair a little bit, like going down, down my sketch went down a little bit lower. If you want an extra effect, you can add like these little tufts that go down past like where your color goes, or a line art kind of ends, because it helps kind of look like straight hairs a little bit. Make it pop, because we're going to... In the, the end, end, I'm going to end up erasing like, like these extra, extra colors on the outside of the face and the um, line from the hair sticking out. But um, when, when it comes, comes to shading, shading black hair, this is, you have like a grayish black color. I like to move over down, down to like purples or blues. And it, it kind of gave me like this blue dark shade. shade. Move it up, up just a little bit towards like, like the top. top. Now, now you, you got, got like, like a dark, um, trying, trying to figure out what color is going to be closest to this. This is black, black so you don't want. Actually, you, you know, know what, yeah, it'd be okay. okay. Never mind, scratch that. Uh, got a black color that would go that well. well. Yeah, I, I guess, guess you could just do pure black, black since it's like cartoon. cartoon. So like, like for these types of hair, hair at the bottom, bottom um, go, go ahead and just color the bottom, bottom of these. Kind of like the black, black near the top, top of the head because the head's, head's going to be covering those. Like ones underneath or behind hair, you want darker than the ones that are like above. So, like, like this tuft is going underneath this because this is going over the ear while this is under the ear. So, like, this part would be darker because it's in between these two, and this one's higher. Same with this part, a little back behind would be darker because it's behind an ear. So we, we just, just color this in a little, little bit more until maybe, maybe like, like about eh, halfway up, up, maybe. Yeah, yeah kind of like curve it around the ear. Right, right here is where new tufts start, start, so you can make like a triangle. Come over here, go under the ear, over here. Do it where the hair meets. Just add like a little patch. It doesn't have to be anything like too, too much. You have like, like a little batch of color. Kind of like going up and over. But that's, that's for you. You want to do that. Me personally, I think I'm just going to skip on that. Because I don't think it matches too well with this type of hair style. Add, add some, some like in between the lines you drew if you really want to do like the back of the head kind of like going down you can like that up this color a little bit darker and then, and then I, like I like to take, take my um blending tool again and kind of blur where some of these are meeting out just to make it a little 
less noticeable in some spots, like where it changed. I'm just going to go in my base color, and you want to go in and erase uh, the extra color that you put in the background, so the hair has a chance to kind of like shine on its own. So you kind of just go in and erase it around uh, what you did. But you can leave some gray because it's yeah, you want to leave some color. You don't want to leave, like, take all of it away. Um, yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can get any more up here. Yes. Vertical. Which is nice and easy for the next layer. Um, so, so your clothes are reasonable. I can see your light, light source, source is coming from um, here. So, so we'll add we'll lights light in, in, in a second. second. But, but we'll go ahead and color in your tie. tie. Oh, wait, wait there, there, just for detail. Can I go in with the gray and we have a curve you want to add gray? You could do keep grays for this. This is, it is a cartoon, you don't need to be too accurate. Around, Around this line. line. And right, right under here, it's just under the collar. And this is out of the sun's range. And then for your tie. I'll wait, wait to color that until um, after start adding, adding lights to the drawing. So then I'm going to go in and uh, fix this because you want to. I like to try to blend my skin, skin colors like back, back together, together so I'm not like having random, random whites just, just out. out. Yeah. Okay. okay. Much better. <laughs> Alright, so, so your light, light source, source is coming from above, which, which you did really well. So, so me, I'm, I'm just going to need a light airbrush, airbrush and airbrush. I got a nice, nice white, white from where my light would hit. So, so following this arrow, arrow looks, looks like, like light's coming from... from like front, front kind of top. top. So, so the light's, light's coming, coming from here, here and you're going to have like kind of hitting the front, front of the character. Kind of so it bounces off and move. And then it will be opacity just a little bit. And then I'll go in here and delete. That and that uh, random, random arrow that I drew <laughs> right there. So then I have kind of like your light. And then I'll lower the opacity just a little bit. So I still have the light effect, but not too, too much. And then I'm going to call that light layer. So you know where it's coming from. Underneath that layer, I'm going to go ahead and 
do shading for the shirt. shirt. So, so now that we know where the light is, we can go a darker shade. As far as the green, like the dark blue one. Kind of go at the bottom of the tux. So it gives the illusion that there's something there. Now I added a little extra something and something just to make it pop a little bit. So I'm going to give them some darker colors right here and kind of draw like a little button on the tuxedo. So I just wanted to add a little um, extra detailing. It's detailed this way. Um, that's not something you have to do if you don't uh, want to do it. Since I got a little bit of light, I'm just going to add just a little, little bit of light, like highlights right there. And then this is going to be curved inward with a little hook there. And because the light is hitting, the face is actually blocking the light. So you're only getting like a little bit from the corners because it's going to be darker because of the shadow of your face. You're going to make your airbrush and slightly darken. So this would be like a crevice area right here in the tie. And then you can just kind of darken and move it down. And add a little bit of light. And so it looks a little blotchy, just bring it in the tool a little bit. Smooth it out. Let it be better boom. So it's hitting, so I just want to add your highlights. You can take like a white. Um, I got my handy dandy paintbrush. You can add like uh, little details if you wanted to for highlights. But I think I'm just going to do like a kind of basic highlight. Design. So, so you don't really have like a highlight right here. here. Because the sun is not going to be able to hit his eyes. So there's really different ways you could do it. I'm not quite sure how I want to. You can highlight like the middle, middle of the iris if you really want to. to. Super up to you. you. Or, or if that's style, you could just leave it like that since that's, that's what they did for the chicken. chicken. Or, since you, you did have your, like, your uh, little, little highlights kind of in the middle of the eye, you can kind of come in like that. that. And I'm the type of person that draws people, so. Just blur those in, and. That just looks like so odd to me, because I have people. <laughs> you can add just something nice similar to that. Then you want to add your shadow, so. Go in, take, take a, like, like dark gray, gray or something like, like you did. And then a uh, trick, trick I learned is just, just draw over the character completely with like, like an airbrush or whatever. whatever. Just, just draw over the silhouette. silhouette. Grab, Grab that layer. layer. Pull, Pull it down. down. Twist, twist it. it. Where it's like, like skewed. Does it make, make it a bit wider? Make out lower, lower the opacity, opacity and then delete whatever's whatever is left on the character so you don't have like a gray on your character. And then and for the, the white, white part on there, insert, make a new layer. I like, I like to, to take, take that, that 
I don't do the white thing so often, but if you want to, and you want to kind of think like, like um, the duck, duck I'm on my bed at dinner. You take the white, and, and then you can, can kind of line it up on the outside. Don't worry if it goes in the sketch, because as long as it's on a separate layer, you can uh, erase what you need to, which is a very nice feature that I personally really, really like doing. It's just kind of like the reason that I need to. Um, Stricter parts like this, you can kind of just do something like that. You don't even need to yeah, it's the back and you don't want a little thicker, you just bring it a little thicker in some parts. And feel free to erase if you need to. So like now I can come in here and Erase what I got like in the hair, or what I don't quite want. So I can edit thickness of the line by just going in there and editing it a little bit. So anything that got in the drawing itself that I didn't want in there, I can easily just lower the brush size, going where the line is supposed to be. Make it thinner or thicker, thicker depending, depending on, on however I need it to be. And pretty much final touches would just be going me going back in and cleaning up like whatever colors might be. Is mashed or hodgepodge missing, or like a word in another color? So kind of like right here, just go in and fix the color, so everything's the right place, right color. And then this do you how many more detail you want to add? Like for me, I'm gonna add a little bit more, kind of like. Flush in here. So I just, I like everyone making blushing happy, happy characters. A little, a little bit more like darks. Just because that's kind of how I typically do a lot of my drawings. This is a sucker for um, details. So I like to get very intricate and like coloring. Yeah, adding more darks or lights in certain spaces just until it looks specific, kind of like way I'm happy with. Um, and going in, in places, places of the line art is not supposed, supposed to be, just kind of go in and erase that. I don't feel like I need these anymore, so we'll ditch those. Yeah. Go in, get my airbrush, I'd like some. Happy faces, and then for this one, I just decided that I kind of want to just add like a little eyebrows, maybe a nose, yeah, something kind of cute, a little earring, a little. in there. Yeah, 
like a little spit of face line if you really wanted to. It's wrong color. Pick out like a. Yes. Bada bing, bada bada bing. Bing. Make the shadow a bit darker, so it shows up a little bit more. And there we go. Iki, but cartoonify. 